Welcome back to the second half of Faith Talk with Apostle Benjamin Smith. We're going to go right into studio and see what else he has to say and what you can learn. So the solution is going to be this. At the government house, they need to put a full statue of Semino, who is the first Bahamian governor, governor general, put him there. Put Sir Linden downtown. Yes. Where Queen Victoria is. My God. And move her and put her somewhere else. My God. And Apostle, by doing this, you will see that the altar yeah, the, has the been altar altered. Has to, yes. Because you have to demolish and remove even that which is sim symbolic. My God. And those altars are there hiding. Yes. Hiding all these years. Hiding all these years. No one wants to touch it. No one wants to touch it. It's not hard to move it. No. One simple excavation. Cut out this and cut out that and finish off the Semino. Put a full body. Yes. And put him right at government house. And put Sir Linden, the father of the nation, right downtown, right there. Yes. Where our Queen Victoria now sits. That needs to be done. That needs to be done. Oh my God. And when I went to Freeport, here's another. When I went to Freeport, there by, by Kelly's, there, there, there's a roundabout. And a year or so ago, I went to speak there. And there was a lady. And she was doing the sculpture, this painting, and this art on these uh, columns and pillars. And on them were seahorses. Now, I'll tell you what's amazing about that. Uh, Grand Bahama is shaped like a seahorse. Mm -hmm. And when you turn it, when you turn it this way, it's it's a knee and a boot. It's a knee. Wow. And the kneecap is where Freeport is. But when you turn it right side up, it's a seahorse. And where the kneecap is, it's now the 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 womb of the seahorse. Hence, the water kingdom is there. The water. Yeah. Because the seahorse is still ancient. It's still warrior type as a knight, really, yes. in, in the realm. But right there at the roundabout, that's the portal that's been opened to the water kingdom. I did a study. I spoke to uh, Commodore Tellus of the past Commodore and he said he said Eleuthera happens to be the most overpopulated species of uh, seahorses in the world and Eleuthera now why would it come out of our waters again we surrounded by the water kingdom yes so people do everything by the water. We love the sea. We love it. We understand. You go for recreation. But there are some people who go for other things. Yes. And there's a lot of dedications that happen there. A lot of rituals that are done there. Uh, hence, we have drownings. Yes. So if lives are being drowned, it means that the sea, uh, it was offered to the sea. That life was offered to the sea. And the exchange had to be power that came from the sea. So now watch what Jesus did. And let, let me go further to Genesis. The first kingdom God gave us dominion over was the fish of the sea. Yes. Then he said, and the birds of the air. Yes. The reason is because the birds came out of the water. So they're the two oldest kingdoms in the world. They were, they were here before all of us. The third would have been, of course, dealing with the earth itself, with trees. So they've been here a long time. And these are the kingdoms that stay after we are gone. So Jesus, the first thing he did was walk on water. Wow, Wednesday. Walk on water. Yes. He walked on his word. But what it really was, he was taking dominion over the marine powers taking dominion. He was showing us, this is what you do. Now watch this. When did it happen? At the fourth watch of the night. So prayer at that time 
also gives you dominion if you're fighting marine powers then three o'clock to 6 a.m is your time to come to, to to go against them three to six yeah because it was that's the fourth watch yes. when jesus walked on water very powerful because that's when he subjugated them that's when he took dominion over them and that that's very powerful to me so in other words when we align ourselves with his time we're going to walk in light power and authority at that time and remember he came out of prayer and then demonstrated power so obviously he was in the throne room first and the courtrooms before he could walk on water so the to, to answer the prayer like I said, and your, your question about altars and sacrifices, we have to raise up a stronger altar to deal with demonic altars. Listen, altars carry people's pictures, yes. body parts, yeah. hair. Altars carry many things. Jewelry, shoes, anything could be on an altar. And if someone wants to curse your life, they go to their altar. They go to their altar body parts they 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 you know the voodoo dolls and all of those things right there but you can't just have the doll if it ain't on an altar somewhere because the ritual has to be carried out and it cannot be effective without blood and these these things are not taught yet it's right under our eyes that, 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 that was my point of course yeah. plain truth in plain sight Truth is often hidden in plain sight. It right, it is right under our nose and eyes. But because of religion, tradition, and cultures, we 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 tend to turn a blind eye to it, or we really don't know. And so the Bible says we are not ignorant of Satan's devices. So it means we are ignorant of the devices because we don't know. And then it says, watch this right there. Then it says, lest at any time he takes advantage of us. So the ignorance of the oppressed is the strength of the oppressor. I always say that. The ignorance of the oppressed is the strength of the oppressor. So the enemy uses ignorance to keep people in bondage, keep them in the dark. You don't want them to know the truth. Because the minute you begin to walk in revelation, you begin to walk in knowledge, you begin to understand some things, the more you advance in the realm of the spirit, watch this, the higher your spiritual ranking becomes. Yes. Because you've now come into more knowledge. Yes. You've come into more understanding and to more revelation. So what the enemy will do is keep people, just teach that. Yes. Stay teaching that. Yes. 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 Yeah. Churches of, and ministries across the globe have all plateaued. They're not going anywhere. Yes. And I went to I went to say that apostle because that's that's why nothing is moving. No. Do you think that governments? Do you see the day coming when governments would literally take good counsel from mm. people like you and many others that have this information and uh, with the solution? I I believe that. Yes. Um, but I believe it happens when we when we change. The paradigm and when we change the conversation um several years ago for instance like you know the lord said to me you cannot enter into a government system speaking church language daniel was schooled or trained in the language of the chaldeans he knew how to speak to nebuchadnezzar uh, moses grew up in the house of pharaoh so as a prince of Egypt, also a prophet, he knew how to approach Pharaoh when it was time. Yes. He knew the protocols. He didn't just, you know, show up there. I mean, we know he showed up with the long robe and the rod in his hand. But when they saw him coming, I, I believe he knew how to approach. They knew. Is this? I wonder if. 
maybe he said some things still in, in Egyptian language to them for them to give way to him coming before the Pharaoh. Very powerful. A lot of times you you have people like a Nathan who goes before David. Yes. But he had to put the language in such a way for the king to accept it. What has been happening is that the church will go to the government and speak in tongues. <laughs> I didn't go to laugh apostle, but no, that, 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 is, that is real. They will go to hear all about Shanda de 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 God's <laughs> get this go. man out of here. Where is yeah. security? <laughs> Where is security? security. <laughs> Who this is? Yes, because you are right. Because again, they probably think the people are fanatics, um, crazy. I tell you all of them crazy. Oh, and so now, right away. You've closed the door because you've not you, you 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 have not studied where you're going. Whenever we want to get into governmental systems, they all have a language. Yes. It's in studying the language of the courts of the system. So for instance, we're just talking about this. You cannot speak battlefield language in a courtroom. So you can't dress in your battle gear in a courtroom. In a courtroom. Because the courtroom has a protocol, there are yes. standard procedures, yes. and there are people who've been trying to take the battleground um, warfare mode attire into a courtroom system or into a government system. My God. That is the answer. The answer, watch this. Now, case in point, we have paid people like... Uh, let me give you a scripture. John chapter 18, wasn't it? Around verse uh, 36. And it says about Pilate going before Jesus. So Pilate said, don't you know I have authority to do this and that? You know, and uh, then Jesus said to him something very powerful. So Jesus speaks and he said, Pilate asks the question, are you the king? So Jesus said, Thou sayest, for this reason was I born. For this reason came I into the world. Very alpha. Then he says, My kingdom is not of this world. Because if my kingdom was from this world, my servants would fight for me. Very powerful statement. Now watch this though. You are, and then Jesus went further. Let me continue the thought. He said, For even now I can call ten legions of angels to get me out of this. Watch Pilate, I wash my hands off of this man. Well, why would you say that? First of all, Jesus approached Pilate as government to government, not church to government, yes. not rabbi to government, not prophet to government. He approached him as a king. Are you a king was the question, not are you a prophet? The reason is because kings and governments are not threatened by religion. They're not threatened by church people. They're not threatened by the prophets. They're not, they're not threatened. They're only threatened when you are a government. They're only threatened when you are a king. Right. And that's why when Jesus was born, King Herod had a problem. Where is he who was born? King of the Jews. King. Hold on. We already have all these prophets and rabbis all over the place, Herod. We already have the synagogue here. You are not moved by these people. No, because they are not kingdom. They don't, they don't have a kingdom government. There's only one king here. So when he heard that Jesus came, he said, now nah, listen, I have to kill all these children. Because if that's a king, then that means I'm under attack. Yes. And my entire territory is under attack. So when Jesus came before Pilate, Pilate said, are you a king? Jesus said, yes, I am. For this reason, I came to the world. And then he went to tell him about how his kingdom is not from here. His servants would fight. And I could call 10 legions of angels. Watch what Jesus was saying to him. A legion is 6,000. So 10 legions of angels is 60,000 angels. Supposedly at that time, Pilate's soldiers and military was only 20,000. Mm -hmm. So what Jesus was saying was, I already outnumber you. Yes. 
if we really attack now watch this the the power the angelic power and force is judged by Isaiah 37 when one angel took out 185,000 one so 60,000 angels times 185,000 tells you the military capacity and force of 60,000 angels so basically pilots say uh-uh this uh world war five uh no <laughs> so i wash my hand off of this man here i believe when we when we change when we when we change the conversation when we learn how to approach governments when we pray and we're not talking now watch this i'm gonna say it very carefully yes, because sir. um we're not saying compromise you know we're saying repackage yes. how do you represent not just represent how do you represent, represent. jesus yes you have to repackage the way you say it how you deliver that message now i've carried uh prophetic words to governments i've carried prophetic words all over the world sitting with government officials or military officials and they'd call me in and prophet what are you seeing what now watch this but the prophecy has nothing to do right at right at the beginning with revival it has to do about the state of the country yes and what's happening in that country so i had to do my due diligence as a prophet yes because we know in part and then we prophesy in part yes very powerful what i said very that, that's a key for all prophets we know in part we prophesy in part so what happens when you don't know it's the prophetic fool <laughs> <laughs> I like that. we know in part we prophesy in part but god yes. help you if you don't know I mean, I don't want to talk about, you know, the particular person and the people yes. who, you know, praise the Lord. Amen. The, uh, you know, amen. The, the event was over. Yes. The event was over. Yes, sir. <laughs> you can't say shut down something we're done finished last week. Right. This is powerful. Yes. We, <laughs> we know in part, though. Yes. But if you don't know. Yes. See, if, so you're not listening to the news. You don't know what's the updates. You don't know what's happening. So when you don't know, it makes you look like the fool. Yes. So it brings a reproach to the to the believers because then we are looked at, we fanatics and we crazy and we don't know what we do doing. So we have to know because a leader is a reader. So before I enter nations, I read upon those nations. Of course. I study about those yes, nations. Yes. I study about the religion in those nations. What is the, the demographics of that nation? Uh, I study uh, what is the religion of that nation? What governments are there at that time? What has been happening in that country? So before I go there, I don't just go there and pray. I pray before I go. I do my homework before I go. Yes. So that when, if I'm called to go before that government, I already know crime is at a high or uh, human trafficking is high there or narcos in terms of the Hispanic, the cartels are in those countries. So I'm not going to address something that's not there. So as the prophet, watch what God does. He uses you according to the level of your knowledge. But if you have no knowledge, what can the Holy Spirit bring to your remembrance? You know, uh, and that is going to help people because it was just all of that to answer the question. Yes. If we are going to intelligibly deal with altars, deal with sacrifices, we have to study what that is about. Then we have to study what is our tactical or uh, approach and strategies that we are going to use in spiritual warfare to dismantle those altars in the realm of the spirit. Because we have to raise up stronger altars to, to go against and to confront demonic altars. But if we don't know the altars we're confronting, we're in trouble. That's been the problem. I have a question for you, Apostle, and I'm sure y'all may have the same question. In these times, um, many voices are speaking 
how does one know the voice of God mm -hmm. and is able to discern that this person was sent by God versus the person who's not sent? Because there's so many voices now, Apostle. Everyone is prophesying. Um, people may not have a church building like you, but online, social media has made it easy now. Oh, very so easy. you have a lot of people on there and, you know, people are being fooled. People are being fooled in great lengths. And how does one know and is able to discern the voice of God and one who is not sent by God? That's very, very, listen, I, I answer that with Matthew 7, 25. You will know them by their fruits. You know, Jesus was answering the question of the prophets with that same scripture. You will know them by their fruits. Um, but the fruit means track record, yes. manifestation. It also means when prophecies have been fulfilled. Yes. And I'm going to make a statement because a prophet can be wrong. A true prophet can be wrong, but not false. I like that. A false prophet is always false. But a true prophet can be wrong. And not false mm. and the reason is because God allows us in this dispensation to miss yes. to keep us humble yes. to keep us under his grace yes. he allows it yes. so you may give a word that is 95% uh, you may give a word that is 80% true and 20% off you may give a word that doesn't happen for the next 10 years, but it happens in 10 years. Yes. Now, to those who heard it now, they believe it should have happened now. But when it happens 10 years down the road, you still have to come back to this point. But you've already judged the prophet based on the now and not the future. Very powerful. Yes. So how do we know? Number one, who is a prophet? A prophet is a spokesman, a spokeslady, a spokesperson, we say, yes. one who speaks on behalf of God. Yes. The prophet is an ambassador, a political or governmental appointee, appointed by the king himself to represent his mind and his will to the people. So, the prophet, uh, we get this word nabi, you know, that's a prophet, a spokesperson, um, you know, one who speaks on behalf of another. And that comes from Nabal, which means to bubble forth and flow forth. Um, so, you know, to gush out of your belly, out of your spirit, yes. the will and the mind of God for the people of God. Uh, a prophet is sent to a people, sent with a message for a particular time. Uh, prophecies outlive the prophet. Because the prophecies was not for the prophet. It's for the people. Yes. And the, the, prophet, the prophet is the gift to the body. The person is the gift. There are people who have a gift of prophecy, but they are not the gift of the prophet. The person, Elijah was the prophet. He's the gift of the prophet. He didn't, shout, he didn't have a gift of prophecy. He was the, the gift. gift. And, and that must be understood. So, for instance, the commissioner of the police is the gift at the time. The prime minister is the gift at that time. There's, there's a person that steps into that office for that time. They are that gift for that time. Very powerful. So, the, the, the prophet is the gift that is given. So, when Jesus ascended on high, he gave gifts unto men. He took off all of his mantles and offices and he left them on the body because mantles don't go to heaven, they stay in the earth. So the person dies, but the mantle doesn't. It stays here to complete the path, the, the task at hand. The assignment, watch this. Your assignment does not end with you. It begins with you, but it doesn't end with you. Wow. Because one plants, one waters, and then God brings the increase. Very powerful. Very. Because your, your assignment, a true assignment from God, will outlive the person. Yeah. 
when it's your assignment and God ain't give it, it dies with you. That is deep. So this is why we, we've not seen longevity in ministry because the person's purpose, the person's purpose was their purpose, not necessarily God's purpose. Because if it's God's purpose, it's going to outlive you when you go. Jesus' purpose is still being carried out. Yes. That's how you know. Right now. Yes, that's how you know. So, so this, this is to, to answer that question. There are those that have the spirit of, of prophecy, the gift of prophecy, and then the office of the prophet. The office of the prophet is the gift of the body that carries all of the vocal gifts, carries all of the gifts that reveal something. Yes. Um, they're always in that office. They never take this off. They are the gift. They were born with it. Um, and when it comes to the believer who has a gift of prophecy, it is only as needed. as needed. So when it is needed to bring encouragement, edification, exhortation, comfort, then that gift begins to flow in that believer. Um, these are things that need, need to be told because there are those who prophesy, but they're not prophets. There are those who can cook, but they're not a gourmet chef. <laughs> they're, they're, they're those who may be you know uh, love policemen but they're not police and so this is where things happen uh, you have you have those who call themselves prophets but like Jesus said you know them by their fruit yes so you have to look at the track record you have to look at the character um, Amos 3 and 7 says surely the Lord God will do nothing but he reveals his secrets yes. and then it says to his yes. servants yes. then he says the prophets so without true servant good a prophet is not really a prophet he he reveals secrets his secrets to his servants, to his servants. then he says the prophets, the prophets. What the church has done or religion has done is put the prophets before the servant. Yes. A true prophet does not mind serving. Because it starts with the heart. Yes. Okay. You are teaching. <laughs> you're teaching and you're answering many, many right. questions <laughs> and yeah, because you know you become curious at those things. Yeah, right? yeah. It it's it, it starts it starts with a question. Uh, go ahead, bring the question out. I have one question. I am very concerned about this generation and the way the things are going. My generation particularly. Um, this generation is under so much attack in terms of my Bible, suicidal thoughts, anxiety, etc. Can you really talk about this generation and also what are your thoughts about pastors passing on the Bible to this generation? Oh boy, praise him. <laughs> that's, lo that's loaded, but that's good. Um, um, and I, I, I enjoy that question. Um, it's very pertinent for this hour. Um, first of all, the when it comes to mentorship, mentorship accelerates wisdom. And a mentor has to locate who is worthy to carry the crown. Yes. Worthy is the head that carries the crown. Yes. So there are those who cannot carry it. And I, I believe what has happened is that the group have zeal but no wisdom. And it's because they don't want to get under wisdom to find out what is the background? How did we get here? What's the history? Because I need a deeper appreciation of the journey. If I'm going to continue this journey, I have to know how you began. What has happened is that we have a generation to a certain extent who's not interested in where you, where you started from. They're not interested in the journey. 
they just let's just jump in the car. Let's just go. Yeah. <laughs> but do you? Uh, uh, That's it. No with license. no license. Yes. <laughs> no insurance. No license. Oh my God. No death. Let's just go. And you can have the zeal without the wisdom. And and this is where this is where the problem has been. Because you have some older generations. You have two sides of this. Um, I'll put it this way. Uh, religion has no problem with holding on to what they have until they die. Yeah. Those that have relationship don't mind relinquishing what they have. Yes. Because it is the extension of the person. Birth out of relationship, birth out of covenant. That's why Jesus could relinquish. Because he was in covenant with them. He had a relationship. So he didn't mind passing it on because of the relationship. Part of the difficulty uh, is that sons have to locate true fathers. I believe where we have suffered, we, we have made mentors fathers. Listen how I said that. Paul said, I have 10,000 instructors, but few fathers. But the problem is when you make your instructor your father. That's where our problem is. Okay, so you go to school and you like your teacher, but your teacher can't be your mom. That's the truth. So what happens now when the student will make the teacher the mother? Now that can be a problem when you get home. It can be a problem because we, we can dance when you tell me teacher say. And I is the ma, and I is the pa paying the bill. <laughs> That's where the, the fight uh, comes. And, and I'm answering the, the, the question there because the generation has to be hungry about what they see. And they have to search out where they are going. If it doesn't look like your future, don't follow it. If you can't see yourself doing what they're doing and beyond what they're doing, don't follow it. If you're going to perpetuate a dead work, don't do it. Because I thank God for the foundation, but we have to build on the foundation. But what happens when there's no foundation? Then what are we building on? And so, a, when a history is not honored, a future cannot come into fruition. And there, there are many who, is, who have disrespected or dishonored the past. And that's why they cannot advance today. You know, Jesus said, I can do nothing except my father. It's what I see my father do. He always referenced back to the foundation. We have a present generation and the ones to, to come who are not referencing anyone. And that's where the problem is right now. You can't tell who is from who. Because everyone is renting a dad. <laughs> Bus stop believer. They go from one place to the next. Oh, that's the truth. This week is so and so. Next week is that one. They ain't like this one. They leave there. They offended on this one. Go down there. Uh, yeah. So now you mix up that count salad. We don't know what we can get. So this is where I believe part of the solution is. Um, the Bible said there in 1 Kings 19, uh, Elisha, Elijah, he saw Elisha, the son of Shaphat, who was with 12 oxen. And then it said he took his mantle and he passed it over him. And he continued moving. Now watch this. So the father located a son that would carry the double portion, who was busy working with a business yeah, that says enough right there before you can relinquish a mantle look for those who are working those who have a mind to work those who have a mind to plow they they are breakers 
they break the fallow ground. That's what he was doing. Yes. Very powerful. Elisha was a farmer. He understood soil. He understood what to do. And I'm saying this uh, because Elijah found him. What about the physical son of Elijah? We don't know. And so this is a season where two things have to happen. Fathers have to locate sons. The, the, the problem has been those who call themselves fathers or mothers have not been fathered or mothered. So we've had dysfunctional families in the body. And, and you only pass on, you only pass on what, what your environment is or was. So, so that's also been a problem. So you, you know, just to answer that question, um, this generation can make it if they would honor the past. Find out the journey. Where are we coming from as a nation? 50 years ago, majority rule, what is that? You know, find out who was the father of the nation. How did we get to this place of 50 years? We didn't just get here. No. But that's, the, that's what I'm saying. We find out church history, years of it. So if you're sitting down with a mentor, you're sitting down with that father, like you were doing tonight, you're asking questions out of the life, out of my life. Yes. So you sit down, you find out what's the journey? How can I not, uh, you know, what are the mistakes? What are your greatest pains, your greatest joys in life? Uh, if you had to do it all over again, what would you do different? in ministry those are questions that i asked when i sat with dr miles when i sat with j rodney roberts when i sat with a lot of leaders around the world those were my questions when i was youth a youth i said how you get in touch with god mama i prayed for 50 minutes and i can't get through i just hear you call jesus and he show up in the road i want to know how you get there yes, yes. that was that's me See, that's what I'm saying. So the this generation, uh, where I, I'm giving the answer from where I was as a youth, I had to lose me to gain them. The Bible said Elisha tore his mantle to take up Elijah's mantle. Then he went back to the Jordan and said, where's the Lord God of Elijah? He could not use his own mantle because the Jordan only responds to the father's mantle. It refused to open under Elisha's double portion. He had the double portion, but he had to rent his own to pick up the father's mantle to go back across. And then the Bible said, when the sons of the prophets saw it, then they saw, then they said, surely the spirit of Elijah rests upon Elisha. So to answer the question is that there has to be a hunger, there has to be an identification. There has to be an honor for the past and for the foundation if we are really going to move forward. Um, and then those who want to pass on the mantle have to locate those who are worthy to carry it. Some people are not dying because they have not found the head to carry it. And that's the truth. They have not found the head. You know, you know, here's what Jesus said. Foxes have their holes. Birds have nests. But the Son of Man has nowhere to rest his head. You know what he was talking about? Not home. His mindset. Who can I trust with the king's mind? That's what he was saying. And it took three and a half years of studying and training in Kingdom University before he could relinquish to them that ministry. So, so uh, that, that's just kind of to, to answer. I, I am afraid of two things um, where I see those who are too hasty, uh, who are not moving uh, in wisdom, I see those that are operating ahead of their time. And I'm concerned because what I see is pride without purpose, without wisdom. 
and knowledge can go to the head. Because you can get one touch of the anointing, but if character is not there and humility is not there, integrity is not there, uh, the same anointing can kill you and expose you. And that that is um, that is where I have been concerned, really, about uh, our youth that are on fire for God. But that's where I'm concerned. They're not asking the relevant questions, not willing to, you know, sit for a while and and study, be an understudy of where they're going. You know, lest we perpetuate um, religion. So this is, I hope I answered the question. I think you did. Any but, uh, questions on Zoom before we, I got, Aisha has a question. Can I? That's a good question, um, because again, you know, I I was just on a show that they they asked me the same question, and I had to be careful how I answered, but but yet at the same time, uh, I was very um, well. I thought in my estimation of the answer that I was fair, um, and uh, without compromise, and the reason is because. Uh, when you look at uh, gender-based societies um, and changing rules and changing the laws, and especially where you are, Canada is wide open and um, has been that way for a long time, more advanced in certain things. Um, we just trying to fit now. Uh, and that's been a, a fight and a struggle. Um, but of course, when you look at life itself, Everything has a gender in life. Um, when we talk about the sun, the moon, and the stars, they all have genders in different languages. So we already know in Spanish is El Sol and La, Lu La Luna. So you, you have that in the, the L and the La. 
Um, the same thing in the French. There, there's the E-L and then there's the E-L-L-E, -L -L -E, which already identifies a male and a female gender. Then the third person singular is an it. New to gender, it has no gender, it's an it. Right. Uh, and, and that is it. Um, because it, it carries e it, neither. Um, and I'm saying that because all in life you find whatever the system is, that there it delineates male and female. Electronics have an input and an output. Magnetics have a north pole and a south pole. You put two knots together, they ain't away. And a negative and a negative, only in math, maybe, can give you a positive. But but most of the time, it's still going, you're still gonna have that male or that female uh, gender. You're gonna have those in gender. Now, animal kingdoms have a male and a female. Very interestingly, right? The fish kingdom and amphibian kingdom, they can change their genders. I remember a lady told me some years ago in a church service in the U.S. She said, what about frogs? I, said, I heard you talking. What about frogs? I said, well, are you identifying with the amphibian uh, kingdom? I said, because she said, well, they change genders. I said, well, they're enjoying them. <laughs> I said, because how could you, how could you demote yourself from made in God's class and image to a frog class? I say, you know what happened to frogs? Don't let the Chinese find you. You finish. <laughs> you end up as frog legs if you would. I say, come on. So the UBU you end up spring chicken on somebody's plate. That's right. I said, because that's what you're saying. No, but they change their genders. I said, but that's them. In in their and let me watch this. I just um heard this the other day uh with the eel. The eel begins uh as a male. Now the reason why it changes the gender is because the population has to survive. Oh boy. In other words, there are too many males there. So in order for the population to increase, one of them had to become the female. So it was for survival that it took place. Very powerful. That's very powerful. Very powerful. Um, now, we can learn something. From, from, the, from the different kingdoms in terms of, you know, genders. Now, I think it has to be taught because this was the question that came to me. And here was my answer, and I'm going to give the answer the same way. In the Catholic school systems, Catholic, Baptist, Anglican school systems, Christian school systems, we say no to teaching it. I'm pretty sure they won't. We won't do it because we are only perpetuating the image, the likeness of God. Yes. When we begin to talk about the transgender, we're talking about the abomination. So, so in other words, in, in our belief as believers, we don't teach it in terms of the lifestyle being accepted. Anybody, you got that? Now, as an educator in the school system, they could teach in terms of information, but not lifestyle. Because these things are now coming to us. So children need to know what is what, what is yes, what is no, what is it. They need to know by information, not necessarily lifestyle. Because the lifestyle is where it becomes the abomination, is where it becomes the perversion of the real deal. You got that? Uh, and see, and that's why I said it has to be taught. It still has to be taught. There are those who are saying, don't even teach it. But if you don't teach it, you're still around it anyway. And, and your children are still going to, to come into contact with people who in the school system, so to speak, or in their neighborhood, who might be a dry queen. Watch this. Two years ago, right? <laughs> you like this. Two years ago in the newspaper right here in the Bahamas, there's something called a deed poll. 
The deed poll is when you want to change your entire name. Right? Yes. So you have an affidavit of birth and then you have the affidavit of correction. If you want to correct, you know, your name in terms of a vowel or a letter. Right? But a deed poll is when you want to change the whole name. Watch this. This was, uh, I think, November 2022. I have to check because it was in the papers. And in a deed poll, the mother wrote a letter. And the letter said, my daughter, Amanda, um, uh, I want to change her name from Amanda to Ezekiel. That in the paper. I've seen that before. And she said, you have 30 days to reply or the chief to, to the chief passport officer. So if you don't contest for 30 days, Amanda becomes Ezekiel. And the passport office has to issue the passport. Here's the problem with that. Every time Amanda show up, she have to show up as Ezekiel. <laughs> That's the problem. The problem is she have to show up as the man every time. That's the problem. Because if you go in a way, that means you got to cut all this off. You got to cut. You got to cut. You got to cut. Every time Amanda show up, she got to show up with mustache and beard. Because you was easy kill now. And you did a whole deed poll that you want to change your entire gender and your entire name. And your mother was the one who put in for it. Because that's, the, you know, you have the, uh, the applicant and then you have the affiant. And then you have the disponent. Those are legal words. The one who applies on behalf of. So the mother had to apply. That was in the papers. Now watch this. I didn't see a reply to it for 30 days. So you know what I mean, right? Ezekiel is here. Ezekiel is here. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't believe it. And this, and this was in our own country. Then you remember the issue with John, um, the Haitian national, and he was in a deed poll as well. So all of these issues are out there, legally speaking. What do we do as believers? We still have to know what is out there. We have to be aware of what is out there. So I don't have a problem with the information. My problem is when the information becomes the lifestyle and the lifestyle yeah. is praised. That, that's where the problem. Mm -hmm. that's, that's where we have to teach the same, right? This is an abomination. And, and I'm going to give you an answer to something. There are those who have the struggle and not the lifestyle. Wow. Now, as long as there's a struggle, we could get you delivered. Yes, yes, yes. When you are in the lifestyle, that's you already made up in your mind. That's, that's what it are. is. Yes, yes. So you accept the lifestyle. But as long as you have the struggle, you, you could be delivered and set free. There's a process to get that to that point because you don't know what it took for the person to get to the struggle. It could have been incest. It could have been molestation. It could have been rape. It could have been several yes. things at the root that caused that person to have those proclivities in that generation. Uh, it could be that. You see? So what, what society has done, however, is told those people, you can't even come to my church like that. We, we don't want to be friends with you. We don't even want to talk to you. I remember uh, um, I was on a Lincoln Band show the first time. <laughs> I ain't going back. No. The first time. Yeah, I, I, I said, now, this, this ain't good, man. I, this is the first show, man. This, I say, this is the first show. The first show I ever did with him, he had Tori to call. Tori? Tori. Toriano. Well, Tor Toriano. And Tori called, hello, this is Tori. Can I come to your church in my high heel shoes? Can I put my hat on my head, my fascinator? Can I wait on you? <laughs> I say, Lincoln? <laughs> Pastor? <laughs> uh, hey, Tori say, Pastor, I'm talking to you. <laughs> so I said, Tori, to tell you the truth, you could come to the church. Right. I said, because, what? No pastor's ever told me that. I said, what well, I'm telling you, what would Jesus do? Yes. 
Yes. I said, you can come to the church. Yes. I can come like that. I said, yeah, I don't care how you yes. come. But once you reach in my territory, we can deal with you. That's right, Apostle. That's right. I said, because I cannot discriminate. If you can't come to me, the drug dealer can't yes. be there. The prostitute can't yes. come to oh. me. The alcoholic can't come oh, to me. I'm not discriminating. Go you ahead. can come as you are. Yes. But once you get in that territory, we can teach you the image of God. Oh my God. The likeness of God that there is redemption there is liberty there is a way out yes. you don't have to stay the way that you are and so that's where Lincoln said yeah you have to cut this off and cut the next thing off you got to reverse <laughs> cut. So we'll, he said we'll scrape all the demons off. <laughs> well can I tell you Church was rammed, jammed, and packed that night at the hotel. They, they were expecting stories. Was story. 700 persons show up to the hills yeah. that night. Where was Tori? Ra Tori ain't reach. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I still wait, no Tori. <laughs> oh my God. But watch this. Now watch this. But Tori said something powerful. Every other pastor and bishop told me no. And that is it. He said, you the first. I said, put them in. Come on. Yeah. I said, you know, I don't discriminate. You still a soul and a person. That's right. Yes. And there's still hope for you. Yes. There's hope. There's a life. Yeah. And, and so what religion tends to do is to ostracize, criticize, throw under the bus, yes. and judge the person. Yes. And they can only judge because they cannot identify. See, the sin that you identify with, you let them go free. The one you can't identify with, you send them to hell. Okay, the smoker, know the smoker. Yes. The drinker, know the drinker. And the, but, the, but if the liar finds the smoker, the liar can tell the smoker you're going to hell because I don't smoke. That's where the problem is. That's where the problem is. Religion will always condemn. But a relationship with the Lord will bring you into a place where you could be free into an environment where there's healing, where there's deliverance. So, so these issues exist in the world. We should be aware. We should be aware of the strong men that are attached to them. So this is where the church has to teach. This is going on, but this is the strong man behind that. This is how we pray about that issue. What about our children interacting with those who are out there? All you have to do is tell them Jesus loves you. Yes. Teach the children how to love, basically. Well, I don't love Jesus. I don't think he's real. You don't have to think he's real. Love covers a multitude of sins. Because you still have to walk in a, you know, not non-judgmental way. Uh, and love doesn't judge you. Love heals you. Love restores you. And, and I think that's the answer. So, so, like you said, identity, it goes back to the root. We have to teach the children where they came from. What is the family's background? You start with self-identity. Then you give them the identity in Christ. Or you could start with the identity of God and then move to the, to the identity of your bloodline. And certain things and, you know, that are in your bloodline. And how to combat that and how to come against that. But that's my answer. That's that's my answer. Amen. So we're almost running. We're just about yes, I have Thank to wrap you. up. Apostle, I could talk to you all. No? Okay, I, I'll give you that question. And I, I would hold my question for when Apostle Apostle won't do me like Lincoln Bain. No. He will come back to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, back. okay, good, good. I just making sure because I can keep that quick. <laughs> no, you can still give it. Okay, you know. This was the first thing that you talked about, but I wanted to be very clear on it. We talked about the courtrooms going in the courtrooms of all going on the battlefield oh, yeah. when you're dealing with prayer. So the questions are, how do you enter into the courtroom? Right. How do you go about getting the legal grounds free from what happened before you? And can you go in the courtroom on behalf of someone else? So oh, I love it. That's love so it. good. He did. Uh, he did. He did. Yeah. 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 I, 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 I get to share it with me, yeah. but that's a good question yeah. right yeah. there. This, this, that, that's powerful. Yeah. So, uh, well, we enter the courtrooms through our praise, our worship, you know, when we enter in. 
Um, you, you always enter in through your praise, your worship, your thanksgiving. Um, um, let me just say here, you visualize. The power of vision and imagination is powerful. Um, because you, can, you have to see the courts. See yourself entering into a courtroom. I will yes. enter his gates. I will yes. enter into his court. Yes. You have you have to see that. I saw the Lord high and lifted up, and you know the train, the robe filled the temple. Okay, so we see that the Lord before us as judge, not as father, though. The courts see shows God as judge. So you go before the judge, and as you go before the judge in prayer, now all of a sudden. There are cases, so you have to see those cases that are filed. Because you have to remember, the accuser of the brethren, the adversary, is there. He's there, and he brought files. So that, that's also a part of it. Now, while you're there, the Holy Spirit shows up as your legal aid. And he said, I came to represent you. Uh, let me give you a sneak preview of what that demonic file over there. So all of a sudden you're praying and all of a sudden you hear murder you hear abortion you hear uh for instance you know some other thing you know rebellion you you hear they didn't pay the tithes <laughs> you hear poverty all of those are cases you know he's bringing up lying you know so you you start hearing why am i hearing it those are files you may hear incest, molestation, perversion, poverty, lack, deprivation, infirmity, sickness, disease. All of those are still files, files, files. While you're hearing that, God is saying, that's 200 years for you. I'm taking you all the way back. Because so, you know it's not your sins. So if it's not your sins, remember John chapter 9, who did the sin? This man or his parents? He was blind. But the question was, who did who the did sin? This thing is right. So they were aware that the forefather's sins is what opened the door to the blindness. And Jesus said, no, this case ain't like that. <laughs> but I'm not negating that that doesn't happen. So when you go into prayer and you feel and sense conflict, it means that files are being shown and showing up. So what do you do? Father revealed the files to me. Reveal those files to me. And then the Holy Spirit starts bringing it to your remembrance. Or, you know, it might be a scene of something. Something happens. So what do I do? Now I know First John 9 now kicks in. If we confess our sins and the sins of the forefathers, he's faithful and just. So, Father, you know, on behalf of myself and my family, you know, I repent of unforgiveness, hurt, bitterness, Malice, anger, I repent for being jealous of that person, having offense against this one. I said some words I should have never said. Lord, forgive me for that. Forgive my forefathers for envy and wrath and, you know, and incest and molestation and uh, fornication and adultery. Lord, forgive them. But Father, they didn't know what they was doing. I call upon the witness of the blood of Jesus to the stand. We call the, the witness of the blood. You're faithful and just to forgive and to cleanse. So let the blood of Jesus revoke and remove sins, iniquities, and transgressions of the forefathers. Let the legal rights be removed. Legal grounds that the enemy has against my life and my generation, the third, the fourth generation, or you could say 10 generations on my father's side, 10 generations on my mother's side, in the name of Jesus. Let it be revoked and let it be revo removed by the blood of Jesus. Then when you pray, all of a sudden now, you'll sense it. You'll know when it's done. You know how you know that uh, the prayer is done or that courtroom. Remember the courts in session, the books are open. That's part of the books. Yes. So now you say, Lord, whatever is in the destiny, the books of destiny about my life, let that prophecy, what is written within your books about my life, my destiny and my purpose, for my family, etc. Let that come into being let it be established let it be executed let it be carried out and when you leave the prayer time you know you got the victory because all of a sudden 
there's joy that comes in or there's a peace that comes in then you know there's a verdict now so you walk out i free from this and then now after that prayer now you go into the battlefield and you see now you spirit of infirmity you can't come against us no more you spirit of perversion that had my generation for the last 10, 100 years you can't touch us no more i have a warrant for your arrest because the legal grounds have been removed and the rights that you've been using you can't use them any longer so I bind that spirit in the name of Jesus, Jesus. And I command you to loose my family members, loose my mind, loose me. Let me go free in the name of Jesus. I have a warrant for your arrest and I cast you out in the name of Jesus. See now, watch this. We went quickly from the courtrooms right to the battleground. And the, and the battle wasn't a hard battle. You know why it ain't a hard battle? Because the enemy already know you got governmental rights. You have the military, you, you have the document in your hand as a warrant for his arrest. Very powerful. It's, it, warfare should never take a long time. Victory in the battle is when you know you already won from the time you started. And you know you already won because you won it in the courtrooms. Because the king already gave you the victory in advance. So that's the, that's, that's the answer to your question right there. Now watch this. Every time you go in the brain, you feel and sense a conflict. That means he entered and he was doing a search when you left. So as soon as you left, he said, man, shucks. She done clear a hundred years. Wait. Okay, now let me go by and let me check the mother line again. Let me check the father line let me see where our heart is at this time. He's always looking for a reason yes. to deny us of what rightfully belongs to us. And so every time you go into prayer, you go into the courts. You'll know it because all of a sudden things open up for you and, and breakthrough will come your way. Jesus. Yeah. That's it. Wow. Let me end with something. What is yes. in the books of destiny? That's the prophetic word over your life. So what the prophet does, we see what's in the books. And that's what we prophesy. Every country has a book of destiny and purpose. Jesus said, I come in the volume of the book that is written of me. So, uh, you know, God knows what's written in the books about your life. He knows the plans that he has for us plans to prosper us to give us a hope and to give us a future yes so whatever is written within the books of destiny and purpose for our lives it will not be hindered it will not be limited it will not be restricted it will not be delayed it shall surely come to pass In the name of Jesus. and god will watch over his word to perform it and he will make it good there's never failed one good word of all of his promise and so by faith it is going to take place it is going to come to pass yes. in the name of Jesus. Yeah, the name of and then Jesus. from there, you just continue to thank God every day. Thank you, Lord. I am I am free from perversion. Yes. I am free from poverty. Yes. I am free from sickness and disease. Yes. Because he whom the sun sets free is free indeed. Yes. And the blood of Jesus has cleansed me from all of my sins. Yes. I walk away acquitted from every sin, from every iniquity, from every transgression in, name in the name Jesus. of Jesus. I have legal rights as an ambassador of God's kingdom to establish God's kingdom in, in the earth realm. And let it be as it is in heaven, so let it be in the earth realm. Let your kingdom come. Let your will be done. So we, listen, uh, as I bring this here, you know, the, the days and the months ahead uh, and the years ahead, we are in the jubilee of all jubilees. So you get ready for the release. Whatever has been tied up, whatever has been restricted, has to be released. Hallelujah. Whoever Jesus. owes you has to pay you back. Yes. Because we're in the season of the payback. Yes. We're in the season to get your land back, get your inheritance back, yes. get your houses back. This is your season of multiple streams of income. Yes. This is your time. 
to take ownership and to be possessors of houses and land, to walk in ownership and dominion, and to walk into your promised land. Yes. Your wilderness season is over yes. in the name of Jesus. Your dry season is over in the name of Jesus. You are now in a place where your faith will produce victory that overcomes the world. Yes. You shall overcome. You shall be more than a conqueror in this move in the name of Jesus. You shall be the head and not the tail, above only and not beneath in the name of Jesus. And no weapon formed against you will be able to prosper. Every tongue that has risen up against you in judgment, you shall condemn it. You shall cancel word curses against your life. We cancel in the name of Jesus every demonic sentence or satanic prophecy that has been spoken over your life. Any clinical prophecy that has been spoken over your life, we cancel it in the name of Jesus. And we decree and declare that the heavens are open and the rest of your life will be the best of your life. You will live a long life. You will be satisfied with long life in the name of Jesus. You will walk in miraculous, miracle working power. You will be triumphant in all things in the name of Jesus. There will be supernatural favor upon your life in the name of Jesus. And favor will surround you like a shield in the name of Jesus. You have come to the kingdom for such a time as this. You will walk in the Esther anointing and the Deborah anointing as a queen of Sheba in the name of Jesus. This is your season of the open door and God is opening a door that no man can shut, but he's shutting doors that no man can open in the name of Jesus. You will pursue, you will overtake and without fail, you shall recover all. Your children will be taught of the Lord and great will be the peace of your children in the name of Jesus. There will be no backlash. There will be no retaliation. There will be no sickness. There will be no disease. There will be no violence. In the name of Jesus, there will be no accidents. No evil shall befall you. No plague shall come now your dwelling because he will give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways in the name of Jesus. I decree and I declare it tonight that the way has been opened for you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That this too shall turn for your testimony. You're going to testify. You're going to glorify the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You will know that God of Israel neither slumbers nor sleep. You will understand and you will know that this is your season. This is your time. A time of victory. A time of triumph. A time of the jubilee. In the name of Jesus Christ. A time of restoration. For yea, I will restore the years that the locusts have eaten. The canker worm and the caterpillar said the spirit of the Lord. Get ready. Get ready. Hallelujah. Get ready. The glory of God shall be revealed. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. We shall see what we've never seen before. And we will go where we've never been before. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. We thank God uh, for this time. And uh, you expect great things it is the lord's doing and it will be marvelous in our eyes and those who are mocking the lord god of elijah they shall fall down and die by fire they were scattered by fire in the name of jesus in the name of jesus fret not yourself because of the evil doers neither be thou envious against workers of iniquity they shall soon be cut down like the grass they shall wither like the green herb. Trust in the Lord and do good. So shall you dwell in the land. And verily you shall be fed. That's Psalm 37. In the name of Jesus. Now light yourself in the Lord. And he will give you the desires of your heart. God oh, bless you God. Keep this. Let's give it up for Apostle Ben. Oh my God. Apostle Ben. I just want to thank you so much for the word of God, for the impartation of knowledge, for the declarations, the prophetic declarations you just released. Souls will be saved. Yeah. People will come to understanding yeah. and the true revelation of who God really is. Yes. Amen. Amen. <laughs> and it is so and it is done. Everyone, this is Apostle Benjamin Smith. You can find him at the embassy. Um, you can enjoy him midnight cry. 
on Facebook. You can also follow him on social media. He's on YouTube. He's on Facebook. Where else, Christoph? Is he on Instagram? He's live on Instagram. He's on Instagram as well. Trust me, I went there. And I had a glorious time with the Lord, <laughs> the, the, especially with the worship. Oh, uh, we could go all night because Apostle Ben, he speaks many languages. We didn't get there. He is a, 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 a music maven. He knows how to play, I think, instruments, and he yeah. can sing. And by the prophetic, God gives him some songs because we got one song <laughs> on him that night when the devil was in trouble. <laughs> But until the ne next episode of Faith Talks, thank you for joining me tonight. My Zoomers, thank you for joining us. All of my live audience, give yourself a round of applause. Thank you for joining us. Until the next episode, God bless you. Thank you. It is our prayer that you are blessed by this episode. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and click the bell to receive notifications of new uploads. God bless. Do you have a life story to share that you know only God could have brought you out? One that can change someone's life for the better. Become a guest on Faith Talk by emailing faithtalklive7 at gmail.com or send a direct message on Instagram at faith underscore talk underscore. We look forward to hearing from you.